In a special address to Parliament, President Rania Wickremesinghe firmly defended Sri Lanka's engagement with the International Monetary Fund and the nation's debt restructuring efforts. He asserted that earlier criticisms of these initiatives have proven unjustified, highlighting the positive economic outcomes, including stabilized currency, reduced debt servicing costs, and enhanced fiscal discipline. The President's statement calls for unity and support for the ongoing economic reforms aimed at ensuring sustainable growth and resilience. Honorable Speaker, I won't go over what I have said, but I will talk of what we have to do in the future. The efforts taken to restructure debt provide Sri Lanka with the necessary breathing space to transform the economy into a resilient and stable economy that can manage the lighter burden of debt service in the future. This breathing space should not be wasted. In the past, Sri Lanka's economic growth was dominated by the non-tradable sector. During this period, particularly post-war, the economy expanded, but tax revenues and exports as a share of GDP declined. The capacity to service debt continued to diminish. To reverse the trend, we must transform Sri Lanka into an economy where growth is driven by non debt creating foreign exchange inflows. Exports of goods, export of services and foreign direct investment must be the leading drivers of growth in the economy. In parallel, the fiscal, monetary, state-owned enterprise and other reforms must continue in parallel to ensure that fiscal and external buses remain robust. A combination of strong revenues and robust foreign exchange balances are critical to ensure Sri Lanka's capacity to service the debt. The Economic Transformation Bill embodies all of these critical factors. It provides the institutional framework to support the growth of exports and FDI in the economy. The bill also provides the macroeconomic targets that will enable continued economic stability and sustainable inclusive uh, economic growth. Purposeful implementation of measures incorporated in the Economic Transformation Bill will create the required economic conditions that enables Sri Lanka to truly benefit from relief created by restructuring of debt. But a failure to do so would mean that we are swiftly fall back into trouble and the breathing space provided by debt restructuring will go to years. <coughs> what Sri Lanka requires now is a high growth trajectory. A high growth trajectory of 7% GDP per annum. It, it may be high by Sri Lankan standards. We are stayed at 4 and 5. But Vietnam and all have showed that you can go at 7. If you do two decades of 7% growth, the uh, uh, GDP will go from about 85 billion US to about 350 uh, billion US. Four times. So are we always going to stay poor? Our policies to stay poor? Shouldn't we have policies which will make us rich? Not us. The future generation rich. In two decades, we won't be there. <coughs> They will be there. We have to make them rich. So that is, that is certainly what we should follow. And I ask this house and all political parties to get into a high growth policies and let's compete with each other on that. We can't go with low growth. We can't go on this journey any further. Therefore, while today is a major landmark and cause for celebration, it is by no means allow us to be complacent as a nation. The successful conclusion of the official debt restructuring should give us the confidence and encouragement to move forward on this path of economic recovery towards the goal of a prosperous, inclusive and sustainable economy, a high growth economy with a minimum of 7% growth uh, per year. Honorable Speaker, uh, I am sorry that when I am making this speech, uh, one of my colleagues, the only colleague who came to parliament with me, Mr. Sambandhan is no longer here with us. He passed away on Sunday. We had been, he and I have worked together through difficult times. And I know the contribution he has made. He, one thing, uh, though he was in the TULF uh, and the TNA, he steadfastly stood for the territorial integrity of Sri Lanka. He told me, will you ever, do you think, Ranil, I'll divide the country? As a small boy, I went to see independence uh, in 1948. None of us have seen that. We were not even born. Uh, most of us. But he had his own views of how uh, power should be shared. That 
uh, there is no reason to fight on it, but I think he has done a sufficient amount of work that we have only a little more to finish and the best contribution to him is to let us finish that uh, uh, work on devolution and decentralization. Thank you. For more latest news, subscribe to FTTV.